Marhaba, and welcome to the Matrix Green Pill, where real people connect. Welcome back to the Matrix Green Pill podcast. My name is Hilmarie Marie Hutchison, and today I'm joined by my lovely co host, Namita. Welcome, Namita. How are you today? Hey, Hilmarie. Marie. I am good, thank you. And I'm really looking forward to speaking to our guest today author, founder, and CEO of Line Source Consultancy, Rajiv Gupta, who is going to share with us some secret ingredients to success. Isn't that exciting? Thanks, Dittal, Hilmeri. Thanks, Dittal, Lamita. And it's an absolute privilege for me to be a part of this communication today. Absolutely. So exciting. Rajiv, welcome and thank you so much for joining us today. Great. Thanks, Rajiv. So we start with, can you please share a little bit about yourself and how you ended up here in Dubai? Yes, sure, Namita. I'm founder and CEO of an organization, an empire, I'll use the word, called Lime Source Consultancy. And uh, we are quite blessed in terms of organization being globally awarded as number one in multiple countries, present across 15 countries. I remember I started 30 years before with the savings of less than $100. And uh, we reached to a beautiful journey where we definitely learned a lot across uh, the path. And I realized there is a lot anyone can do to achieve in life. And uh, yes, when you travel, and you get a privilege to travel to multiple countries, you learn a lot in the process. So when it comes to me, I would say someone who started from less than $100, reached to a global empire, awarded globally, awarded as the HR CEO of the year award globally again and um, acknowledged by the the royal families of Africa, UAE and multiple places. So I think it's been a privilege and a beautiful journey so far. And um, as you asked the question about how you landed in Dubai, I always had a dream. I had this inner calling between uh, within me to, to do something very big, to do something huge. When we say in that age, let's say 30 years before, no one actually know in specific, what do you mean by very big or what do you mean by huge? But I definitely had this inner calling that I need to change my circumstances to reach to a better place because most of the people, they have dreams, they have vision, but they do not intend to change their current circumstances and then that doesn't match their aspirations. So I have been quite blessed where I was clear that I have to do something different to change the circumstances. And I took initiative and I've been blessed to have the opportunity. And that's how I landed in Dubai. And I would say the destiny started changing colors. Wow, that's truly inspiring. Thank you. Yes, it sounds like from what you've just said that you took some active steps and initiative to change the outcome for your life. You're right, you're right, absolutely. Now, Rajiv, let's talk about your business. You are the CEO of Lime Source Consultancy. So for those who might not have heard of it, can you tell us what your company does? Definitely, definitely. Mary, we are blessed to be in such a beautiful industry where we provide bread and butter to millions of people across the globe. We are in a business of human resources, providing job opportunities to people. It's like we know we know that there are multiple countries across the globe where they have talent, but they do not have enough opportunities. Similarly, there are many countries who have large industrial setups, they have large organizations who need people and they prefer to have cosmopolitan culture, prefer to have various nationalities. So you have a mixed population working, serving to variety of people globally because the world has changed. We all have seen borders doesn't exist anymore in businesses. Absolutely. You can reach anywhere online without any borders in friction of seconds as well at times. So we realized there was a huge gap in the industry, specifically when we talk about GCC, where we are based out and we started from. This is a melting pot where we had 200 plus nationalities always. And it was very important to have people serving them also from different nationalities. So we as an organization is a beautiful bridge across globe and GCC in specific to provide opportunities to people who are talented and they do not have any opportunities back home. And the clients and the corporates are thankful that they're getting all the nationalities, leverage of them as one contact point. So Lime Source Consultancy is in a business of providing bread and butter jobs to people. We reduce crime across the globe this way. We increase prosperity to each and everybody's family. We count blessings every day because when you add bread and butter, that's the time people use or invest that earned money into education 
education of their children. It's something I would say beautiful. Yeah, it sounds like a very rewarding business to be in. That's for sure. Absolutely, yes. And we are so passionate about it that I wish and I pray when I'm 95 years old. So I'm coming to office and we are trying to add value to more and more people even then. Something that we all need in these times of crisis is this kind of thinking. <laughs> absolutely, Ramita. Absolutely. So Rajiv, let's discuss your book, 50 Secrets of Success. It's very exciting. It sounds very interesting. What is it about and what inspired you to write it? A very, very interesting question. And believe me, whenever this question comes to me, I will have to take a pause before I answer. I'm going to go back home with 50 secrets of success. So yeah, I'm excited to hear. It's a leverage and a privilege and blessing to me as well to share that. I'll share with you, you know, Hilmeri and Lamita, most of these people, like we are there. Everybody's life in today's world is so busy that we all start with pre-scheduled things in mind. We all start days with a back-to-back -back meeting. We hardly have actually any time for ourselves and teaching or guiding or imparting knowledge is beyond the question in most of the cases. So I somehow always had this deep inner calling that what is there that you have learned in your life, which you would like to pass on to the generation which is about to follow you or the people who are already struggling in similar stages, how we can add value. And believe me, I have realized it long before. It's not only those school subjects which makes people, you know, live life 70 mm. I always knew it's not about uh, the circumstances you are in which defines your destiny. I always knew that there are people who are more uh, apprehensive about their uh, chances of getting failed rather than looking into opportunities to grow big. And there are many people who have got short-term success and unable to sustain it for longer. If you ask me, I would have written this book somewhere around at least where I would have been 70 years. But thanks to COVID, when there was enough time and uh, I thought when there was all the governments majorly worldwide have told everyone that one can't step out to curb COVID, I thought that was the beautiful time to sit and start writing each and every single word what has been as a shape of inner calling. And I seriously and sincerely wanted to impact millions of lives because it's old saying that uh, it's always precious to teach fishing than feeding a fish. Yeah, absolutely. And I was told by many people that, and very honestly, like when I, I have been traveling across uh, all the parts of the world because of this, it's into hiring business for multiple countries. Always at those days, I would say before COVID, I used to always take books in the flights I used to read, I realized we always had the book like we had one book talking about law of attraction. We had one book talking about how to grow money. We had one book talking about the successful habits of successful people. I couldn't find one book which talks about A to Z, what is required to be a legend in the field you are in. And I realized most of the books were not written by business empire owners. These were written by motivational speakers. Right. So I would say it was more like a first-hand experience when I started my career from door-to-door -door selling, then working across international platforms from various stages. So I thought, if I don't write it, then something I'm missing in my life. And I think it came as a blessing. And it's going to touch, by the grace of Almighty, millions of lives. I'm so 100% sure about it. Right. So these are basically your life lessons that you have penned down into the book, just to share it with others. I'll say it's much more bigger picture than that, Namita. This book is not about Rajiv Gupta. No, it's not the biography of one person. This book is talking about those fundamental secrets and fundamental principles without which nobody can create empire, nobody can sustain empires, nobody can have a cycle where you can say, I'm happy. And then finally, how you want word to remember you. So this is about the fundamental principles which are backed by the research, backed by the study, backed by the real life examples of living legends and people who change the globe across. So this is A to Z of what is required to start, survive, struggle, thrive, and how you want to give it back to society, how you want to be remembered. It's a complete cycle of a person who wants to become a legend. It's like a roadmap, step-by-step -step process for someone to understand how to go. And it has my examples in between for sure, which kind of uh, retestify that what others have said or others have been doing 
is experimented and explored and blessed by the person writing as a first hand on that. Right. Interesting. Yeah, it sounds like a wealth of knowledge all condensed down into this book that you've written. It sounds fantastic. I'll be honest, Hill Mary. Yes, I would say it's a book which has a power to transform lives and I am 100% sure about it. In this book, you ask a lot of very good questions. One of them being, why only 1% of the population possesses 96% of the world's wealth? Can you tell us why you think that is? It's very simple, Namita. It's very, very simple. If you go through the history, you would really see that how we all have been trained. The system has been like this, that you grow, you go to school, you get grades, you come out. Now, in the whole process till college, if you see, we all have been actually told to study, get jobs, save a little. Okay, let's talk about today's scenario when it comes to COVID. Nobody has ever foreseen this. The whole world has shaken. Now, when you say, why we say that the most businesses have failed or most people have not been able to make very big even in you know no no if you see vice versa there are many people whose mindsets are different this is that one person who doesn't follow blindly what is been written in a book 20 years before the books which have been in schools in journal they're not written today they're written around 20 years before but the history changes itself so fast like we all have heard Facebook now in a few years before. When we were in school in 4th, 5th, 6th standard, where were these things? These were not even there. So the message is when you are the one who is more about learning knowledge, finding out the reasoning why, going entire wave, I would rather put it out in a way that when we all have been kids, we have been very creative in asking questions. We were fearless to try anything new. We have always been very smiling towards every new opportunity. We have always been welcoming any person, any, you know, most of the friends we meet and we share things. But now that with time, when most of the people grow, they become very apprehensive about trying anything new. For them, if COVID came, it's like end of the story. If like job gone, like everything shattered, business stopped, like the life stopped. So this is not the way it has to be. So those one person people, I would definitely be privileged to count me in them. Why? In our business, you can understand it's 100% about hiring people from overseas. The moment you came to know, Namita and Hilmeri, the moment you came to know that the borders are closed, flights can't come. Now imagine who can fly to GCC for jobs. Nobody, right? Right. But we did not take it, I did not take it as the end of the scenario. I rather invested that time into writing book for 12 hours a day for seven to nine months straight, utilizing every minute and creating gems out of it. So it's more like what you do with the situation you are in. Absolutely, yeah. You make also a good point about uh, children not having inhibitions that hold them back. They're not constrained. So that's certainly something for adults to learn from children. Earlier you mentioned, Rajiv, that uh, when you started your career, it was with less than $100 in savings at a very young age. And then you moved on and went on to become a very successful business leader. What advice would you give to young entrepreneurs out there who are interested in starting their own business? Very good question. If we all ask questions to our friends or colleagues or common friends we know or we come across people we meet. If you ask them question, why have you started this or why are you thinking to start a business or what is the idea behind starting a business? If you trust me, you ask 10 core people this question, the answer will start roping in, was fed up with 9 to 5 job. It was monotonous. I was not saving enough of my job. I was not happy with the bosses or I'm not happy with the industry or I'm not saving enough. So messages, you will very rarely find people coming out with the idea that this is what is missing. This is the gap I identified. This is what I have within me through which I can impact lives in masses, in millions, in thousands. This is how I'm going to change the world around me. 
So I would say one advice to entrepreneurs is don't focus on yourself. That the first mistake is focusing on your comfort, your profit, your revenue. Please sit on the other side of the table first and see whether your product and services are actually going to make impact in people's life. If answer comes yes from your own soul, try experiment with close people, first circle who give you genuine feedback. Then try to improve more and more and come out with service or product which is foolproof and then don't look back in life and go in a full fresh manner. Rajiv, you have also mentioned about how you want to be remembered, the whole section on that. So tell us, how do you want to be remembered? Very, very, I would say, strong question, Amita, and it applies to everyone in life. They say that when you think about the final result, let's say somebody in any championship ought to be state-level champion, university-level champion, national-level champion, or international-level champion, or a global number one in whichever sport one is talking about. You will see that the whole preparation or whole approach will change if your end goal and result, I would say, or the aspiration where you want to be is very clear to you. Now, when you say how you want to be remembered, now, if a person really knows that do you want to be remembered by, when you ask me the question, I don't want people to remember me in life by how many bank accounts I had or which cars I drove or how many plots or flats or properties or real estate one has or how many stocks one invested because it's again for an individual. It's nothing to do with the society or the world around you. So I would say when it comes to me, I would say that... um, And it applies to everyone. It's a history proven. It's a nature. You get more happiness when you give happiness. It adds more blessing when you bless others. So it's very, very important that what you do, why you do, and what difference it's making in people's life around you, that is what defines you. That is your story. My story could be different. My story could be that I want to give it back to the entire world. I want to serve humanity. Now, that serving humanity could be in many ways. Every individual has their own way. They can start with the first circle of their family, their friends, their community, their state, their country, then globally, why not? See, bigger the dream, bigger the vision. They say the bigger the potential you get because you automatically start thinking big. So when you have the goal, which is big, the entire things around you changes because for someone, Maybe a two-wheeler is a target. For someone, maybe a four-wheeler could be a target. For someone, could be an aeroplane could be a target. So message is, once you have clear in your mind where you want to reach yourself in your life and how you want people to remember you, it will define not only the goals, but the ethics and characteristics of your own to follow in that path to reach there. You would never compromise on the way and the process to reach there because you want to be that kind of sports person who is still see there's a difference in a good player and a great player a good player is a person who has won the game a great player is a player who has ensured that if while running somebody fell he will give him a hand and still he will be first so you don't have to yeah, stand on people's shoulder to grow you can always take them with you and grow as well so i think how you want to be remembered makes in a character of a person that defines the character which will be shaping in the future. Excellent. Thank you so much, Rajiv, for sharing your insights and advice. I'm sure that anyone who reads your book will learn so much and it will have such a big impact on their lives. Now we've come to an exciting segment of our show, what we like to call our, our little our version of a game show, ah. <laughs> where we will ask you a few rapid fire questions. Ah, I'd love to. I would love to. Okay. So the yeah. first question is, what did you want to be when you were a kid? Good question. Very good question. See, when I was a kid, when you say rapid fire, I knew one thing for sure that I want to do something very big. As I said, initially, when you say to define very big in that age, I would say something which is connected to people globally. But I honestly never had a very clear picture in that age when I was a child. But I knew for sure it is not connected with a city or a state or a country. It has to be global. Amazing that you were thinking that big, even as a kid. That's amazing. Uh, (laughs) I have definitely read books. But somehow, uh, one book of Mr. Shiv Khera, you can sell. I found many gems in that and many of the stories have been very close to me. 
I would say that. Mr. Shiv Keras, you can sell. Excellent. Can you name one thing on your bucket list? Ah, uh, this is a difficult one, yeah? I bet you have a long bucket list. Okay, one thing when you say is, I definitely want to ensure to reach a stage where I have my five directors who will be in a position to pick up those genuine cases across globe where someone needs funding for education, where someone needs funding for somebody seriously, where some child wants to do something real big in business and he needs funding. So these five directors will evaluate cases, priorities, and when three out of them sign, we fund them from our organization. And most importantly, when I feel very happy will be, I want to ensure that every Thursday of a week, there is a free food distributed from our side to whosoever and the quality of food should be world class. And if a person comes in SUV, he should feel like sitting and enjoying that meal free of cost with a feeling of giving back to the world with no expectations. Amazing. What is one thing you do every day, no matter how busy you are? I pray for sure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah. I pray and I meditate and I think these two things always keep you close to what you are. It keeps close to you get answers from within yourself and uh, prayers always add strength to you to cross the boundaries which many times are within more than the visible outside more. Thank you for playing along Rajiv. My pleasure. That was fun. Now, before we wrap up, we would like to do our green pill moment. Rajiv, what was your green pill moment? The action or event that was the turning point for you or your career? This is a, a question which definitely is something which can always make a lot of impact in everybody's life. I would say that the very first thing we have to listen to our intuition always because intuition always works much more better than the bookish knowledge or the logics around. It's right from deep within when you know, yes, I'm going to make something big. I'm going to make something huge. You will automatically start connecting and that those green pills who are always around you, you will pick one which synchronize with your aspirations. Now, in my case, this has been when I, mean, I used to work in India with an organization called Unilever, called Hindustan Lever in India, I saw an advertisement about Dubai. There was an opportunity for Dubai. I went for the interview. I have been selected. I would say that my green pill was landing in Dubai. The only reason is any person worldwide. And those days, internet was not there. Those days, one did not have the opportunity of knowing different people's cultures, how they think, how they react, mindset. So I think my green pill was when I got an opportunity for Dubai, I landed and I saw that it's a place where it's a melting pot for so many nationalities. And what I could gain here in one year, it was definitely not possible to get that kind of knowledge by being in the center of so many global nationalities. I think it has been a biggest learning point it has been a great platform to grow and uh, for sure for sure dubai gives that kind of freedom to give shape to your dreams and there are many stories in ua where people have made real big so i would say my green pill was an opportunity for being in dubai a melting pot for various nationalities so landing in Dubai was a real eye-opening experience for you. A fantastic experience, yes. It's a blessed opportunity, I would say. Great. So Rajiv, thank you so much for being here today and sharing your very personal and incredible journey with us. I'm sure our audience will enjoy this conversation as much as Hilmarie and I have. Wonderful. It's my privilege. And, uh, and it's always when we get like-minded people on show, somewhere it gives us that knock-knock that, there is nothing in the world which is not possible to achieve when someone from $100 saving can create global empires globally. So true. Now, Rajiv, before we say our goodbyes, could you please share with our audience your social media handles? Where can they follow you? Where can they find your book? Perfectly fine. This book is released in 25 countries. It's on Amazon worldwide in all the countries. The book has been released in audible version by Mr. Matt Granato, a quite a big celebrity in audible version. The book is available on Amazon. That's one. It's on Flipkart. That's two. It's on Shakespeare.com. That's three. And UA, it's on GulfNewsTour.com. And the book, uh, social media wise, it's on Facebook. It's on Instagram. It's on Twitter. It's my author's pages there. 
email and I have already given my email ID on my author's page and also on the book link. Anyone, many times what happens, this is a book, intense uh, knowledge where a person can go step by step. And when this tie try to correlate with their own life, they might have some questions or queries or some advice they want to take from author to shape up their life. They might correlate my journey of 30 years, which can help them somewhere for the inputs in selfless manner. There are this my email there. One can always shout to me. I'll revert back in selfless manner. The idea is purely to give it back to society. And I want to really add that power with you that if I can do it, I'm pretty sure anybody else can definitely do it. Fantastic. Okay, and what we'll also do is in the show notes, we will put links to all these various places where you can be reached. Again, Rajiv, thank you for joining us today. We certainly enjoyed it and we wish you all the very best. And we certainly hope that the book becomes a bestseller and a big hit. I wish I'm sure it will do. Thanks, Jitin, Hilmeri and Namita. And I'm so happy. And the book is already uh, touching lives, I would say, and in a very deep way. I've recently got a very large celebrity globally who asked for the book for all of his 25 star hotels. The book has got five star rating in Amazon worldwide. So yes, your blessings are definitely working. And I would say this was an honest attempt to give it back to society. So it's definitely shaping very, very well. And I'm so feeling blessed about it. Thank you. Thank you. If you enjoy our conversations, please like and subscribe. See you next Wednesday.